Is the new CX-60 a luxury car killer for Mazda? That's the question I've got, and I'm gonna do my best to answer it in this video. This is an all new medium-sized SUV from Mazda. It doesn't replace the CX-5, which has been such a popular car in the medium-sized SUV segment in Australia for many years now, but it's an upmarket option that is all new. We've got new engines, we've got a new platform here. There's a lot of tech and stuff going on new price points as well. This is a much more expensive proposition than a CX-5, and Mazda thinks that they can take on some premium brands with this new vehicle. Can it? Well, let's have a closer look. The 2023 Mazda CX-60 is an all-new, medium-sized SUV that is targeted at the premium segment. It's not a replacement for the CX-5, but rather an additional offering and one that is on an all-new platform. It's bigger than the current CX-5 in terms of width, length and interior space, but still seats only five inside. It also has a new range of mild hybrid petrol and diesel engines, as well as a new plug-in hybrid powertrain. There is also a new 8-speed automatic gearbox in there that includes an integrated electric motor. The range starts with a 3.3-litre turbocharged petrol engine in an inline-six configuration. This makes 209 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, with a claimed fuel consumption of 7.4 litres per 100 k's. There is also a 3.3-litre inline-six turbo diesel engine, which makes 187 kilowatts and 550 newton meters, and it has a claimed consumption of 4.9 litres per 100 k's. Both of these engines get 48 volt mild hybrid assistance, but increased electrification comes from the plug-in hybrid powertrain option. This uses a 2.5 litre four-cylinder naturally aspirated petrol engine, along with a 100 kilowatt electric motor and 17.8 kilowatt hour battery for a total combined output of 241 kilowatts and 500 newton meters. And that brings a claimed electric driving range of 76 Ks, although it's gotta be said, this is according to most lenient NEDC lab testing and real world numbers in this regard would likely be a bit less. Pricing for the Mazda CX-60 is significantly higher than the current CX-5. It starts from just under $60,000 before on-road costs. And that's for the base specification Evolve with the turbocharged petrol engine. And to give you an idea of the model walk, a mid-spec diesel goes for just under $70,000. That's called the GT. And there is also a top-spec plug-in hybrid, a Zami, and that costs $85,000 before on-road costs. However, Mazda is offering all variants of powertrain in a combination with all variants of the spec level. Standard levels of trim are high as well in keeping with the premium aspirations of this new model. To pick off a few things, there's a 10.25 inch infotainment display with smartphone connectivity, digital radio and native navigation, Maztec fake leather interior trimming, a 360 degree camera system, powered tailgate, automatic LED headlights, front and rear parking sensors and 18 inch alloy wheels. Going up to the top spec, you start including niceties like Nappa leather, electric seats with heating and ventilation, a 12 speaker sound system, a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and a larger 12.3 inch infotainment display. This higher positioning means that the Mazda CX-60 intends to compete not with mainstream competitors like the Toyota RAV4 or Nissan Pathfinder, but instead shoot up towards the likes of a Lexus NX, Audi Q5 or BMW X3. This is the interior of the CX-60 and I'm in a high spec model here. This is the Azami with an SP pack thrown in for good measure. So that's $75,000 plus on-road costs. But this pack here goes for another two grand. So 77 grand for a medium-sized SUV from Mazda. Yes, that is a very high price point. And so with that price point in mind, this car really does need to deliver in terms of the interior spec, the layout, and just the feeling of quality. It doesn't really miss much in terms of specifications, I would say. We've got heated and vented seats here. We've got a heated steering wheel, digital instrument cluster, big infotainment display. It is upgraded and new. We've got a lot of features going on here. And this does actually work quite well. It's not a touchscreen. And generally speaking, not being a touchscreen in other makes and models doesn't work very well in terms of being intuitive and easy to use on the move. But I've got to say, this is actually not too bad also got a heads-up display there so in terms of spec and features this really doesn't miss a beat 
and the feel and the ambience of this cabin it does feel good as well this sp pack is quite nice we've got this suede material across the dash here it's all this sort of saddle tan leather color going around the place the seats are comfortable there's not too many issues in that regard but at this price point this cx60 is going directly against some fairly well established luxury players like lexus volvo audi bmw even mercedes-benz perhaps so you've got to keep that in mind when you're considering this and comparing it to other vehicles in comparison to the mazda cx5 i think this is definitely a step up it feels wider it feels bigger and it's nicer overall so that's not an issue there of course it is a bit more expensive so you would expect it to be a better car so in terms of practicalities and everyday features we do have a wireless charging pad here in this spec plus a 12 volt charger there and then open this up you've got two cup holders there there's no additional cup holders or anything like that this is a fairly regular storage setup as far as suvs go i suppose and then you open up this center console here that's reasonably sized it's not terribly deep you could fit a few things in there though and you've got two usb-c power outlets in there bottle holders in the doors and you've got general air conditioning controls here just the usual setup it works well it's easy to get your head around and it does feel pretty quality and one final point which i always love to see in a new car good old-fashioned volume dial you can turn the volume up and down nice and easily you don't have to sit there and mash a button i do appreciate seeing a simple feature just like a volume dial regardless of the price point of the car here's the second row of the cx60 first thing to talk about as always is space i think legroom is pretty good there that's my driving position up front there and headroom is good also even though we do have a big panoramic sunroof overhead the seat comfort is nice i do like the amount of visibility going on here the seat height is good in terms of the shoulder line of the car you've got some big windows on the side here so visibility is good so even if you're a kid that is a little bit lower down or in a baby seat or something like that you can look out the window and i think that's an important thing for a family car some features here include air vents we've got heated seats in this specification and there's two usb power outlets there usb c and a household plug that's 220 volts and 150 watts so you could maybe charge a laptop or a camera or something like that off that charging point there and we've got pop down armrests with some cup holders you can fit some bottles in the doors now one other detail i noticed we've got a 60 40 split here in some cases but it's also a 40 20 40 split in case you want to drop down this middle section which is handy when you want to load the car up and also you can put the seat back ever so slightly there for a little bit more comfort this does work pretty well overall i think it's spacious enough for a family car we've got iso fix points on the outboard seats and then there's three top tether points so i think in terms of width and length this is a larger car in comparison to the cx5 you could probably fit i think some baby seats in the back here and have enough room for the kids let's check out the size of the boot on this cx60 because it's a larger vehicle and it's also got a bigger boot which is great for comparison's sake the cx5 has just over 400 liters of space available in the boot this cx60 takes that number up to 477 liters which is a nice improvement very handy for the family buyer as you can see there electric boot in this spec it's actually standard across the range as well we've got a space saving spare wheel there hiding under the floor that's always good to see much better than a goo kit in my opinion and we've also got a 12 volt power outlet there and four tie down points there's an extra little nook here on the side for storing some bits and bobs and you've also got some levers here for dropping down the second row so you can do all of those at once plus that one as well it doesn't fold down completely flat but for that everyday trip to ikea that should do the job pretty well When a mainstream car maker moves into or towards the luxury part of town, it's always seen as a bit of a bold move. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit skeptical of Mazda when they announced this car and announced the pricing because it's moved a long way north. But as you start to get to know the vehicle, it does start to make a little bit of sense in some ways. Firstly, the comparison of CX-5 to this CX-60, this thing is longer and it's wider. It's a bigger vehicle overall. But I think the really important detail here is what's underneath the sheet metal. We've got a new platform here. It's what Mazda calls just the large platform. 
but it's got a rear wheel drive bias and it's got north-south engines, longitudinal engines, instead of the east-west transverse ones that you get in things like a CX-5, CX-8, CX-9. So it is an intrinsically different car overall in comparison to Mazda's current range of SUVs. The next big detail to talk about here is powertrains. We've still got a four cylinder, but that is a plug-in hybrid variant with a fair amount of electrical assistance going on. But there's also two 3.3 litre inline six engines from Mazda. They are all new engines, they're turbo, they're mild hybrid, and you can choose between petrol or diesel. And to continue on with that sense of innovation, we've got a new style automatic gearbox here. It's an eight speed gearbox, but instead of having a torque converter, Mazda's actually thrown in an electric motor there. That's where the mild hybrid comes from, and also the plug-in hybrid power comes from as well. So this has a different mechanical layout than most other hybrids in this segment, and it's really interesting to see the way that Mazda's going about it. So what's the end product like? This CX-60, New platform, new engine, new gearbox, new just about everything. I do really like this car. The caveat here is, of course, it needs to be good because at the end of the day, it's quite expensive. But having a six cylinder inline six, 3.3 liters is a good size. It just reminds me that an inline six is a great engine to have. I've seen it in BMWs. I've seen it in the Ineos Grenadier recently, Land Rover Defender. They are an engine that is smooth, quite silky and it's got a really nice power delivery overall. I'm currently in a diesel powered one but I've spent some time in the petrol powered model as well. They are both impressive in their own ways I think. There's nice ample torque in the mid-range. They're not overly powerful overall in terms of feeling like a, an absolute rocket ship or anything like that but they're smooth and responsive and this gearbox does work really well overall. There's none of that dual clutch jerkiness at low speeds that you might feel in other dual clutch gearboxes, but when you're on the move, it does feel snappy and direct. You don't have a torque converter there sapping power away or making that connection feel a bit less direct, I suppose. There's an electric motor and then there is a traditional single plate clutch behind that in the gearbox. So it's quite a different gearbox overall, but I've got to say in application, it works well. Currently driving over some reasonably rough surfaces here. I'm in the diesel powered model at the moment and the ride quality is pretty good overall. I've spent some time in the plug-in hybrid variant of the CX-60 and it's not as impressive. There's a bit of extra weight to contend with there and the car just doesn't seem to handle it as well. The car feels a bit more stiff and just less compliant overall. It doesn't soak up the bumps as nicely as the diesel or petrol powered models do. Naturally, leaning towards a smaller tire diameter overall does help with ride compliance, but even when you're on 20s, like we are at the moment, it is pretty good, I think. And the general vibe of the car, I think, is similar to what Mazda normally does. It's connected, it's comfortable, but not really, really comfortable, I suppose. And there is a bit of a bias there towards driver engagement, good body control, handling, and that sort of thing. And this is an enjoyable car to drive. When you match it with a nice torquey engine, a responsive gearbox, that rear wheel drive bias, which gives this car a really different value equation, I think, a really different character to other Mazda SUVs, this thing does feel pretty good. In terms of fuel economy, that's an interesting one to talk about here. We do have a mild hybrid assistance for the petrol and diesel engine variants, and currently I'm seeing an average of 5.9 litres per 100 k's in this diesel CX-60 at the moment. I've seen it get up a little bit higher, 6.2, 6.3, something like that. Certainly around town, you'll probably use a fair bit more. This is more country driving at the moment, and we will get a more thorough test into this CX-60, all variants, when they come through the drive garage in the future, but initial indications show that this is a fairly efficient vehicle, considering its size and the amount of torque you've got on offer. This isn't a slouchy car, but it also isn't too thirsty at the same time. So in summary, this much more expensive medium-sized SUV from Mazda does deliver some important upgrades. The cynical part of my brain thought, oh yeah, here we go, Mazda's just trying to 
take us all for a ride and get a bit more profit out of their most popular vehicle segment, but it's not so true. This is a different platform. There are different powertrains. There's a lot of stuff going on here that I think does justify the position of the CX-60. The big question, of course, is, well, is it good enough to take on the luxury staples that we all know, things like an Audi Q5, a BMW X3, Lexus NX, and that sort of thing? It's got the right ingredients, I think, but I'm going to hazard a guess that we'll have to really do a proper comparison between those vehicles and probably throw in a few mainstream competitors there to see how this CX-60 really stacks up. But first impressions, I've got to say, this is an impressive car. For a brand like Mazda to move outside of the mainstream and try and attack the luxury part of the world is a bold move and it doesn't always pay off. But I've got to pay respects to Mazda because they're giving it a red hot go here. And the important thing to point out is that even though the prices are really high for the brand, this car does have a lot of different stuff going on in terms of the platform and the powertrains. I really do like those powertrains. In particular, the 3.3 litre turbo petrol and diesel engines are fantastic and they're matched to a nice smooth eight speed automatic gearbox and all wheel drive. So the driving experience is really good. And because it feels like a bit of a driver's car, it still feels like a Mazda in many regards. But does this have all the ingredients to really take on things like Audi, BMW, and Mercedes, even in the midsize SUV segment? There's so many options in that part of the world at the moment, and so many Australians are buying them up. Well, I don't know exactly, to be honest with you. I'm going to wait until we can compare these things first up in comparison head to head. And I'm really keen to see how this thing stacks up because initial impressions are, I've got to say, despite the high prices, really good.